Game one is in the books. Game two on the way. Did everybody enjoy that opener yesterday? We are ready for the next game and Royals postseason today. Welcome into Royals postseason today. We're excited to be back with you, Joel Goldberg, Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery. My heart's still racing after yesterday. Kind of fun to sit back and watch it. That's playoff baseball. Every single moment matters. How about that for an opener? Well, what an unbelievable opening for the for the Royals to come out and establish themselves and the way that Cole Reagans took charge of that game. You kind of hoped that it was going to be the case, but the way Corbin Burns was pitching, it took exactly that and then a big hit later in the game. You know, it's, it's a short series, which is so different than when you're in a best of seven because... In a best of seven, you just say, okay, let's go back and do it again tomorrow. And I'm seeing the comments from Baltimore, and they're saying, we're fine, we're upbeat, we're not panicked, and, and they shouldn't be, yet the Royals are in the driver's seat right now. It is by no means done, but the odds certainly favor them. Well, I think that's the whole thing. In a short series, you want to win game one. We see it all season long. We know if you win the first game of a series, your chance of winning that series are exponentially better, and that's really what the Royals did yesterday. They go out and establish that, hey, we're going to take charge of this thing. They did it game one. And I don't know how many times I've heard you say on our broadcasts over the course of the years that you want to score first and you got to do the little things and play small ball. That's the Royals' identity. And they did that yesterday. Amazing that one walk was all it took. Corbin Burns was on his game. He was dominant. One walk got things going in the sixth inning. Well, it was textbook for the Royals when Michael Garcia draws that walk, and then we had a good idea. He's probably going to try to steal second base. Sure enough, he did. Then, hey, you put him in a situation where Bobby Witt Jr. can make a difference in a ball game, and sure enough, he did that. He did, and I know there was a lot of talk about pitching around Bobby Witt Jr. in Baltimore. They didn't. Junior made them pay, and that was it for the game. You look at the stats from this one, Monty. Just one run, one nothing. Both teams with five hits. Baltimore is the team that has to be lamenting all the missed opportunities. Well, I think when you look at a, a game like that, usually one mistake or one home run or one of something makes a big difference. And there really weren't a lot of mistakes. I'll tell you, MJ Melendez had to miscue in left field, but it did not hurt the Royals. But I think by and large, you know, the Royals just went out and did exactly what you want to do in a close game. You want to make big pitches. The bullpen was spectacular. At the end of the day, they have to be very happy about it. Well, one of the reasons why there weren't very many mistakes from a Royal standpoint is Cole Reagans was dominant. As far as a pitching line goes, Corbin Burns could have gone the distance and Reagans could have gone deeper as well. Came out with a calf cramp and he is fine, but what a dominant performance and he is the one that multiple times had to pitch himself out of jams. Well, and I think that's really what you expect from Cole Reagans. Certainly he has the stuff to go out and, and make a dominant pitch or pitches when need be. And he had a couple of situations yesterday. That was exactly the case, but he came through and he has to be very excited. Hate to see him leave after only 80 pitches, but the bullpen certainly held up there in the bargain. Well, the bullpen did their job, and now you have, if the Royals are moving forward, and we hope that they are, a, a very fresh Cole Reagans. They said that that calf cramp was no issue at all, but he was dominant when he had to be, and he spoke with the media after the game. It's the same game we've played all year. It's just a little louder, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so just trying to, you know, control my breathing, not try to do too much. Um, you know, what we've done as a team to get to this point is, is, you know, it's good enough. It's what's got us here. So just trying to, you know, not do too much and, uh, you know, go out there and execute. It's just cramping in his, uh, I believe it was his left calf. Um, but before that, we should just say how he <laughs> pitched his butt off. I mean, that was incredible. Um, but yeah, he, he came off the field. I actually, you know, he was walking by me and I just, he said something, but I couldn't tell what he said. And I, and I so I just said, you're good. Like kind of joking with him, like he's definitely going back out there. And then he called me down the tunnel and just said, last couple of hitters, my leg was cramping. And we've, you know, we've been through this before. It doesn't usually, just all of a sudden stop happening. So we needed to make a decision, not a decision, we needed to make a move there. Um, and so we got Sammy ready as quick as we could. So a job well done by Cole Reagans, but if he comes out, Monty, with that calf cramp and then things fall apart, because how many times have we said when a pitcher is dominating another team and they see any reliever, it doesn't matter who it is, they're happy to see a new arm, a new face on that mound. That's what worried me yesterday, but 
the Royals' bullpen got the job done. Well, they sure did. When Sam Long came out of that bullpen, I think a lot of people were scratching their heads saying, what's going on here? But then we later learned about the cramps with Cole Reagans. But Sam Long, he's been like kind of an unsung hero for me, a guy that's uh, kind of that Swiss Army knife type guy, lefties, righties, whatever it might be, and he did a nice job yesterday. Right, and then Bubich comes in and looked really good, got himself into some trouble, and that was really a nerve-wracking moment, certainly for fans, maybe not for the Royals, because they knew that they had Lucas Urseg coming, and he got in there right away. We've seen four out saves before, gets the job done, and then took care of business in the ninth. Yeah, and it really, to me, seems like Lucas Urseg, he kind of feeds on those high leverage situations. Doesn't matter if it's four outs, three outs, one out, whatever it might be, he has the stuff to be dominant. We saw that yesterday, and especially the way he finished everything off. So a tip of the cap to the Royals' bullpen, their starting rotation, and final thought on the bullpen, too. Really, they're very well rested here for game two. Now, if you get to a game three, it could be three days in a row, but I would think that just about everybody should be available. Oh, no doubt about that. Everybody's going to have their hand up in the air saying, I want the ball. I am ready to go. It doesn't matter how, if you pitched yesterday, you didn't. You want some action. You want to get out there today and be part of it. And you feel really good because you have another Cy Young candidate on the hill from Cole Reagans to Seth Lugo. So game two, just as the Royals started it out in March, Reagans to Lugo, a combination that has worked well all year long. What do you like about Lugo today? Well, I, I think Lugo, he's really excited about the opportunity to go out and be a difference maker. I think this, you know, kind of the stage was set yesterday with Reagan's performance and Lugo, certainly a different type pitcher, totally different, but we know he has great stuff. And what I really like about Lugo, he's going to be aggressive. He knows that the key to his success is throwing strikes, but he got so many different pitches, and that's what's going to make him dangerous. And so the way the, the deal works in the playoffs is the starting pitcher talks to all the media the day before. So today, Michael Walker talked, hopefully we don't even need that. Hopefully we won't see him until the next round. But Seth Lugo spoke with the media in Baltimore yesterday. You know, all season long, us as a start and rotation have really leaned on each other to, you know, pick up. Uh, things here and there, whether it's a, a whole lineup or just one specific player, but um, you know, uh, it really comes down to being a, being the aggressor, throwing strikes, quality strikes, and uh, you know, not giving in to hitters. You know, I obviously you know faced them early in the season, but we watched their game. Uh, was that uh, Thursday night or Friday night? So you know, I got to see their hitters uh, a couple times through the lineup watching that game. Um, but you know, they're professional hitters with uh, professional approaches, and um, you know, it's something you got to respect and you got to adjust for. All right, so Seth Lugo is very excited, obviously, to get on the hill. The Royals are excited about him, and I think they're going to be, no disrespect, excited to see Zach Eflin just based on the results in the past. They really were able to get to him here at Kauffman Stadium in July. What do you like about this matchup? Certainly a guy that's going to throw strikes. Right. He's not going to walk hardly any batters, only 24 walks on the entire season. He's been kind of a savior for this Orioles rotation, brought him over in a trade from a raise back in July. He's been a, a stabilizing force, I guess, for their rotation. But he's going to be in the, in the strike zone. He's got good stuff, but nothing like Corbin Burns. So it should be uh, more offense today, is my guess, from the uh, Royals in this ballgame. So a strike thrower in terms of he's not going to walk, guys. The Royals might be lucky to get that one walk like they did against Burns yesterday. They have to make him pay for it. Uh, just worth noting, too, one lineup change for the Royals as Hunter Renfro slides into right field in the seventh spot, replacing Tommy Pham, and the numbers suggest why. Five for 13 in his career against Eflin. How about one more X factor, something you're looking at for today? Well, I said Salvador Perez yesterday. I'm still looking for Salvador Perez. He hit that one ball yesterday. I thought maybe he was going to get out of the ballpark, but he kind of hit it in that death valley out in left field at that Camden Yards. I'm going to go with Michael Massey, who homered against Zach Eflin at Kauffman Stadium when he was with the Rays back in July. Well, whatever it is, the Royals have a chance to pop champagne again today in Baltimore. I know you're all going to be watching. Enjoy it and go Royals.